Good evening, and welcome to the Murfreesboro City Board of Education meeting. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Ralph Ringstaff, and a moment of silence. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Good evening to all. And if we could, please, uh, I'd like to get a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. All in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Thank you, board. Communications, Dr. Gilbert. First, we'd like to welcome Ms. Ronnie Shaw, who's the Executive Director of Read to Succeed. Ronnie, would you like to come to the podium, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you all for giving me a few minutes of your time. I'm Ronnie Shaw, the Executive Director of Read to Succeed. We are the local literacy initiative created for Rutherford County. We create programs for age-specific um, folks who are in need of literacy support, like our sixth grade spelling bee and our high school arts conference. We also, of course, have our adult literacy program where we provide tutors to adult learners. Anyone interested in getting a tutor or being a tutor, it's welcome to call us at 738-7323. We also have our family literacy programs, many of which happen right here in the Murfreesboro City Schools, and our ESL classes, which also happen in Murfreesboro City Schools. We have uh, coming up some of our large promotional events, and that's why I'm here tonight. As folks may remember, in the winter, I come hawking a copy of the One Book Community Read. I don't have that for you yet. That title will be announced soon, and I'll come back in the winter and, and offer it up for you. Our Unplug and Read promotional event will be happening, as usual, in February. But right around the corner, we have our Reading in the Schools Day and Reading Rally. And on this day, Read to Succeed volunteers read to over 24,000 children in Rutherford County. And that includes every city school classroom. We're very, very pleased at the participation from the Murfreesboro City Schools. We never have a hard time getting coordinators who are interested in helping put that together for the day. That'll happen on September 17th. It's a Friday. And uh, folks who are interested in reading at their favorite school can pop onto the Read to Succeed website, click on Reading in the Schools Day, and from there you'll see all the schools listed and you can find the one closest to you or closest to your work and, and click on it and um, it'll go right to the coordinator and they'll set you up with a time and you can even request the little kids or the big kids or whoever you might want to read to. And that website is readtosucceed.org. Of course, the day after reading the school's day is always reading rally. It's a great time to get out to your public library. We have a simultaneous party at the three main libraries in Rutherford County. The one here in Murfreesboro is right on Civic Plaza. It's from 10 to 1 on Saturday the 18th. We'll have readers and great door prizes and a moon jump and your favorite characters. Um, come alive and musicians and magicians and I think the National Guard is bringing the climbing wall this year and the list goes on and on. Lots of fresh uh, free food too for folks. Um, so as always I'm just here to let you guys know what's, what's up, what's happening new with Read to Succeed and to thank you for your constant support and participation in all that we do. Any questions? Well, thank you for your time. Mrs. Oh, Phillips. yes, ma'am. I have a comment. Ms. Shaw, I just want to thank you for your leadership and the, um, the whole community of Read to Succeed for how they contribute to the quality of life we enjoy in Murfreesboro City Schools. It makes a real difference for the kids and families, and, and I just want to acknowledge you for that. Well, I, I really appreciate that. You know, our main focus is supporting the libraries and the schools in the work that you all do every day day. We know that your teachers are out there sweating it out and mm -hmm. literacy is their thing. And whatever we can do to, to support what, what you're doing, we're happy to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'd like to ask Dr. Kim Fowler, Dr. Creasa Brooks, and, and Ms. Karen Hawkins, please, to come to the podium. These are our three newest members of the instructional team. Um, in a few minutes, I'll ask the other two members to come up to, but Dr. Brooks, Dr. Creasa Brooks is from Murfreesboro. She has her master's and bachelor's degrees. Um, also, of course, EDS degree and PhD in special education with a minor in reading from Vanderbilt. She is a licensed school psychologist and nationally certified school psychologist. She has co-authored numerous articles about reading and presented at various international and national conferences. She currently is also an adjunct professor for the dyslexia studies at MTSU. She's been a research assistant in the Department of Special Education at Vanderbilt. She was supervisor of clinical services at the Tennessee Center for Dyslexia. And most recently, she was the coordinator of the Vanderbilt Kennedy uh, Clinic, Reading Clinic. And she held that position from 2003 until she decided to come here. Uh, Carissa is a native of Mur Murfreesboro, and she has already hit the ground running. And so, Carissa, we certainly welcome you. Uh, Dr. Kim Fowler left Metro Nashville as the principal at Mountain View Elementary School. She was the uh, principal of the year last year for Metro, and she has been a mid-state regional winner for the Tennessee Principal of the Year. She's taught elementary through high school. She has been the principal not only at Mount View, but also at Kirkpatrick and Chadwell, was the assistant principal at Dodson. Uh, she has her bachelor's degree, two master's degrees, one in administration, one in guidance and counseling, and then her doctorate degree is in educational leadership. So we welcome Kim. Karen Hawkins, um, since 2006, was the professional development coordinator for Williamson County Schools. In that role, she was responsible for professional development for over 2,500 teachers and administrators. She is a graduate of the National Staff Development Council's Academy Program. She has been the executive director for curriculum instruction, a curriculum specialist for special projects, including the READ 180 program. She has been the technology training coordinator and has over 33 years of experience. So we welcome Karen. Um, let me ask Michelle Hummel and Crystal Ferris if you would please join your colleagues at the podium. I'd like to share with the board a little bit about what these folks will be doing. Uh, obviously, if you talk to anyone in the schools, you will find that Kim and Carissa and Karen have already hit the ground running. They have been in the schools. They um, have already been working with principals, have been helping principals, have been helping teachers. Carissa is the coordinator of reading and instructional interventions. She will be responsible for working with the reading program, for working with the response to intervention program. Kim is the coordinator of teaching and learning, although she wants to change that to learning and teaching, and I appreciate that. <laughs> she's been working already with the ELL program. Uh, she's been working with the principals to help them with their schedules. She will be in the classroom with the teachers all the time. She will be also responsible for developing the intensive teacher assistance program. Karen will be responsible for professional development. She has already been working very closely. In fact, all three ladies have been in meetings uh, every afternoon this past week. Um, she will be working with professional learning communities, will also be responsible for the internet and for teacher mentoring. Michelle Hummel has been with us, and I'm glad she's staying with us. Uh, she'll be out a little while when she has her twins, but that's that's all right. She's responsible for testing. She's been working very closely with the preschool this year, and Regina has reported that she's very happy to have her there to help. Um, she works with a homeschool. She also will be working with various academic and procedural committees, textbooks, report cards, and so forth, and she also will be active with professional learning communities. We'll be also working with uh, Karen with the uh, teacher mentoring program. Crystal Ferris is the coordinator of federal projects and school support services. You'll remember that I told you at budget time that I thought that we would need this position, and indeed we do, especially every day it seems like there are uh, new reports that are going to be required and there will be new accountability for the race at the top, but she will be working with that. She also will be working with the various titles. For the first time, Murfreesboro City will have one person at the central office that will be dedicated to truancy. This is something the principal certainly have been asking for. And she also will be working with records. So this is your instructional team, and I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to work with these ladies. The difference that they have already made and the difference that they will make will just be phenomenal. So we certainly appreciate their work together, and I'm very excited about them. <laughs> Thank you. 
And speaking of excitement, um, we have with us tonight Dr. Linda Clark from the Discovery School, and she has with her some guests, and I'm going to introduce three of the guests, but I'm going to let her introduce the fourth guest. Uh, the first guest is Susan Lyons, and she has been working very closely with Cindy Jones. They have been the mentor for our final guest that will be introduced, and also Christy Mall, who is a teacher at Discovery. They have been working very hard. Discovery School, you will remember, has really as a theme, Discovering the World, and this year will be the first step in that as we look at China. So, Dr. Clark, if you would please uh, come to the podium with the rest of your friends and introduce Miss Miss Lee. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, I am very pleased tonight to bring you our visiting Chinese teacher. This is Miss Lee. Come up here, Miss Lee. Hi. Hi. Good evening. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to let you know that she's going to be with us at Discovery School for an entire year. And we're so fortunate to have her because of a grant that was written. One of the teachers, uh, Cindy Jones, a few months ago, several months ago, wrote a grant uh, from Critical Languages and Cultural Issues and uh, was awarded that grant. And that enabled us to bring Miss Lee to our school for a year. So not only is she going to be working with us uh, with some Chinese language, the beginning Chinese language, as you know, that's pretty complicated to learn, but also uh, to help us meet some of our other studies, uh, other standards. For example, in sixth grade, we have Chinese history that we look at. So she'll be helping us with that standard. In physical education, she'll be helping us to learn Tai Chi. We're going to put that on the morning news. And Ms. Lee also has a plan to do an outreach program to visit all of our other schools so that she can take a little bit of China into each school. And that's, that's a very exciting concept. Um, I've been working with Dr. Gilbert so that we could tape some of the Mandarin lessons in a third grade classroom in Liz McPhee's classroom. We're going to be taping the lessons and we'll put those on the website and then anyone will be able to access those. And we can all learn Mandarin right along with the third grade at Discovery. So I believe that Miss Lee has a few words that she would like to say to you. But you know, this is such an opportunity. This is, uh, we realize that this is, this is just a once in a lifetime chance to bring China to our children and to bring that diversity and to bring that opening of doors to the world into the classroom. And I feel so very fortunate uh, to have Miss Lee w uh, with us. So I, I hope you'll join me in welcoming her. Okay. <clears throat> I should say, Chinese is not that complicated, <laughs> if you follow me. <laughs> okay, um, it's a uh, pleasure to be here and uh, join this um, uh, school board. And um, I love uh, this uh, Mofris Barrow place. The uh, people here are very nice. And uh, I have already, uh, doing my observation in school, I found out that the teachers are very nice. The students are very smart. I love this place. Thank you very much. And um, um, I, um, I, I thank you, um, my uh, uh, teaching mentor, uh, Mrs. Jones, <laughs> and my cultural mentor, uh, Susan Lyons. Thank you very much. They give me a lot of support and uh, helping because I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a stranger here. <laughs> but um, when I uh, um, in the uh, airport, I think I am, uh, I'm home. When I saw them, I'm home. Um, yeah, and I'm going to teach um, Chinese Mandarin and the Chinese culture here. And uh, I know uh, uh, some of <laughs> some of the Tai Chi and uh, picking opera and paper cutting, calligraphy things. And I'm going to teach the kids um, uh, those things. And uh, when they get the interesting, I will teach them the Mandarin. And uh, I mean, if you have the uh, interesting, everything, no complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for you. having me here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Gilbert, Ms. Phillips has a question, please, ma'am. 
Well, first, I just want to compliment that, that whole team back there. And, and uh, what a nice compliment to say that she felt like she was home and, and you all gave her that warmth and welcome and, and hats off to you all. But back to the um, what we were talking about just before when you introduced your, your um, uh, let's see, the instructional team. You know what I would love to have, Dr. Gilbert? What would you love to have? I would love to have, I would love to have a list of telling us, a, you know, what each person is responsible for. Um, because you read it off and I just couldn't write that fast. That's fine. And, and I would just love to know, you know, what, what each person does. That would be terrific. Absolutely. What's been interesting with this team is they bring such depth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's almost every day that you learn another talent that they have. And, and really, I appreciate so much Michelle and her guidance and also Crystal. They have been terrific in, in giving background and giving input. And so it's, it's fascinating to watch these folks, although you don't see them together very much because they have been in the school slot, and that's exactly where we want them to be is in the school slot. But really to see um, the idea that Kim, for example, has a depth of knowledge about ELL, and that's something we have needed, and she's already working on that and working with the teachers. So it is it's fascinating. And, and the this team will, will grow and, and depending upon the needs of the students, their responsibilities may change, but at least initially they know exactly where they're going and that's a very good thing. So I'll get that to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, one person that I did not acknowledge with the work with the uh, Chinese teacher and um, that is that of Cheryl Harris, and which is a really nice segue into the next <laughs> item of communication. But Cheryl it, certainly initially and continues to work with Discovery School with this opportunity. As you know, she also has been working very closely with the City Schools Foundation. And in your package, you will find at the back of the agenda the teachers who have been awarded uh, grants in excess of $23,000. And I'm just going to go through this. And again, Cheryl, thank you so much for your work. Uh, the teachers, Carla Calvin, Laura Rourke, Natalie Hopkins, Tony Leathers, Christy Carmen, Stacy Burke, Jennifer Wells, Courtney Brown, Denise Crumbaugh, Cindy McNeil, Teresa McCarthy, Minerva Smith, the leadership team at John Pittard. I, again, Laura Rourke and Natalie Hopkins, Tony Leathers, Stacy Burke, Jennifer Austin, Christy Mall, and Betsy Lynch. So we appreciate the foundation so much. They had a meeting this past week that I was unable to attend, but, but I appreciate Cheryl's continuing to work uh, with them and certainly um, thank her for her efforts. Congratulations to Virginia Nepper. She has been the crossing guard at Mitchell Nelson Elementary for 41 continuous years. Now, it was interesting, I was talking to her daughter who works at Case and Lane, and she said, well, she has been for 41 continuous years, but actually, she was the crossing guard there for several years before that, took a break of about two or three years, and then came back, so really more than 41 years. But um, she has, has been just a figurehead at Mitchell Nelson and has just been so gracious and such a kind lady. So we are privileged to have her in our community and thank her very much for her service to Murfreesboro City Schools. North Boulevard Church of Christ has donated school supplies. Stones River Church of Christ has also donated school supplies and backpacks to, elementary, to Mitchell Nelson Elementary. We appreciate those. The General Mills Foundation, we have received a grant for $9,000 there. This will help us continue the Get Fit Kids BAM program, which is a nutrition program, and it's working with um, some folks from the health department. Andrea Kane has headed this up, and it will be working with children and their parents. They will set goals both for exercise and for healthy nutrition. So we're delighted that those programs will continue. A few months ago, there was a lady who called, and she said, we'd like to raise some uh, some money for your music programs. And so we said, well, that might be a good idea. So we, we thank Miss Anna Moore and Miss Margaret May, who organized the Music is Key Fashion Show, and donated $750 of the proceeds to the music programs in Murfreesboro City. And then we want to congratulate Irma Siegel teacher Janice Summer, who was awarded a Dollar General grant for $2,500. So we certainly thank Jana for her efforts. And going back to the teachers, we thank them for their efforts for applying for the City Schools Foundation. Those are your communication items. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. Next on our agenda is the consent items. Uh, I'm asking for a motion, but are there any that you want to 
take off and put under action, or is there a motion to approve the action, the uh, consent items? So move. Second. There's been a motion and a second. All in favor, Santa Vine. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Dr. Gilbert, uh, action <coughs> items. Under your action items, we have approval of board policies. Kelly Baker. Okay, the first board policy you have before you for first reading is FM 11, personal, um, personal property sales. This policy was amended to reflect the change in the state statutes that allows um, sale of surplus property held by the school system through internet auctions. The city right now utilizes two different um, websites to do internet auctions of our surplus property. That's GovDeals and PropertyRoom.com. And the school system would also be able to um, use similar sites or the, the Gov deals would be the one that would fit with a school surplus property. And it's a great way to help clean out our closet of unneeded items. And, and that is the reason for this particular amendment to this policy. Are there any questions for Ms. Baker? I move we adopt the policy. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor, Santa Bar. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, the next policy you have before you for first reading is IS6, Parent and Family Involvement. It has been revised in, to include more specific information you'll notice on the second page regarding parent involvement when it comes to Title I programs. This um, revision was recommended in, I believe, Michelle, in light of um, some of the requirements that have come down relative to parent involvement in Title I. Are there any questions? Hearing none, is it I have a, just a comment. I'd like to make sure that our teachers are aware of the changes in this policy. Um, I think that they will find it helpful and beneficial and enlightening even though it won't be their responsibility individually to carry many of these things out, I think it's good information for them because I'd like to make sure that they are aware of the changes in this. And then I just wanted to thank Mrs. Baker for the difference, additional references that you put at the end of our policies that let us know about Tennessee Code annotated and also state board policy. That's, I find that very helpful and very beneficial. And just for folks at home that may be watching this, um, we do have policy study sessions, so we're not blindly going through here <laughs> and just saying, sure, sure, sure. We've spent hours going through these and making suggestions and reading and learning about these things, these policies. I move we adopt the policy. Second. Let's put a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, the next policy you have before you for first reading is STU-1, Emergency Closings. The only change to this policy is that I've added a cross-reference to the administrative directive that deals with delay of school openings. I mean, we adopt their policy. Clark, put a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much information okay under reports and information Ralph Ringstaff if you would come please to the podium and uh, present the personnel report. my first personnel report so when I ask for <laughs> if there's any questions please keep that in mind um, you have in the packet a list of resignations retirements leave of absences and then the next page as you can tell, we've been pretty busy the last several weeks to get uh, very qualified teachers on board. We're very proud of these. Uh, this is a listing of certified personnel. So now, if there are any questions. Are there any questions? Are there? Okay. Mr. Campbell and Ms. Phillips. If you can remember, I know this is the first time. <laughs> How many new positions did we have this year? I believe we had 11 new positions. Six. Okay, 11. That was easy. <laughs> well, I, I, my question might be a little harder. <laughs> Great. Well, How were those 11 funded? Were they all funded through general purpose funds? The, Mr. Anderson, I believe so. The, the, 11, the 11 teaching positions are all through general purpose. So, so that's not counting the other positions that 
have been hired throughout the system because those are from other funds, correct? Right. Some of the other positions are raised to the top funds. Some are from title funds. Right. Okay. Ms. Phillips, Ms. Duggan. I just wanted to make a comment that we're going to miss a lot of these people. These 11 positions, are they actually brand new positions? We've added that many to our overall staff, or they're just yes, new people? Yes, ma'am. We made a concentrated effort, concerted effort to uh, lower pupil teacher ratio okay. a little low. Those were growth? We were making an effort to keep the pupil teacher ratio a little bit lower than in years past. I, I think we didn't we didn't need to lower the pupil teacher ratio. It was it was already we already had in the in the budget there were already positions established. So as far as dipping into in any kind of uh, balance fund balance, we did not have to do that. But those eleven positions were, already, were growth positions. We added. Was it, we added some positions. Our, our PTR is actually lower now than it was last year at this time. And the way the splits came about, uh, it, it, we had at, at some grade levels, we had some very low classes, which actually does hurt the number of uh, number of teachers you hire based on the PTR ratio. OK, but but the position, I mean, <clears throat> where did where did the money come from for the 11 positions that are and are they new to the system? Did we grow 11 spots somewhere? Uh, we added 11 teachers as far as it's in the general purpose budget, but the, uh, as you say, grow, we started this year out higher than we did last year, and we were uh, considering how much we're going to be increasing during the year. So we did add some extra positions in there, but there is money when we when we structure the budget, we do have some extra money for growth built into it to start with, in case we have to hire a teacher as we get going. Okay, so of the eleven, how many would you say would would be accounted to growth? Um, it, it's hard to say as far as growth, Doctor, because the way the splits were this year, like at one school we have such a small ratio of a PTR of like a 14 or 15 to 1, so that kind of throws off the whole the whole sequence. So it's not as far as the actual growth because our number is right at budget number right now. So it's, it's kind of hard to go through and say this one's a growth position, this one's a growth position, just the way the splits come out in the 20 to 1 packages. Do we have any money left for if we were to have to have another position? Uh, we can always have the option to go into our fund balance monies. Uh, it's nothing available in the general purpose budget right now for that, but there is obviously you have some fund balances. Right. Okay. Mr. Campbell. <clears throat> How many years, what's the maximum number of years experience that Murfreesboro City Schools recognizes for a teacher coming from another system? Ten. Ten? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any more questions for Mr. Mr. Ralph? Thank you. You're welcome, sir. The Revenue and Expenditure Report and Attendance Subject, Mr. Anderson. Revenue and expenditures behind tab four. We're at the 8.3 percentage of the year, which is obviously the first month. Uh, the On the first page, your net income, of course, this is a cash flow report. Uh, we get very little revenue in because the state does not start putting in money for our BEP until August. So the July report obviously has no state money in there. And pretty much that represents, for the most part, the money that the city gives us to operate on. Uh, so we're a negative $1,776,000 overall uh, in the uh, net income. Our revenue side, you can see that it's pretty much it's just the money from the, uh, from the city. And, and I, I need to point out on the pages the, the dates where, it's, where it says the um, 0809 is really 910. All those are just a year off. They weren't fixed when we use the template, so all those are a year off. On the revenue projection side, uh, we are at 4.3 percent and you know, we're at the 8.3 mark, so um, we're you know, obviously in good shape, but it's just the first month of school. Uh, any questions on the finance report? Well, it's about finance, but it's not 
necessarily about this report. I learned in the newspaper article today that, um, and I thought you did a great job, by the way. Um, I thought that I, I learned that we have to reimburse the race to the top funds. How's that going to be handled? Where does the money we come that we pay for? Uh, our expenditures, our race to the top expenditures. That's a really good question. What the federal government has done is they are having us expend the monies first, and this is true for the ERA funds as well. We expend the monies, and then we have to turn in a request for those monies. How we use the cash is in our cash flow, our fund balance is how we make it through this time. That's why we need a, a, a pretty, pretty high, pretty decent fund balance because we have to pay for it first and then take a few months to get the money back in. That's a great question. It's one of the little little tricks and the state has warned us to watch your cash flows because of that and watch your fund balances. So that's where we are. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Anderson? Okay. The next the next item is behind tab five, your attendance report. Uh, next month you'll have the uh, first 20 day report, so it obviously will be the original format that you used to seeing. Uh, I want to point out on this particular page at the very bottom in the middle in our uh, PTR ratios, uh, pupil teacher ratios, <coughs> kindergarten through through third grade, we're at 18.56 PTR, that's 18.56 students to one teacher. We're really working hard on splitting the children in five, six portions. And then on the fourth through sixth grade, we're at a 19.85 and our district overall average is 19.04. Across the bottom, you can see our PTRs per individual grade. As you know, the state has us hit certain benchmarks at K3 and 4.6, so we, that's why we monitor those, those separately on the report. On the right-hand bottom corner, uh, I have given you where we were currently as of the sixth day of school, and then I gave you your first day of school last year and the, what we ended up last year. You can see the amount of growth we achieved during the school year last year, and you can see where we are now. And our budget is at 6890 and at this time we were at 6884 on the first uh, and sixth day of school. So, Any questions on the... But total students were, were just 44 right now, 44 from where we were at the end of the last school year. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. I think that's a great um, anticipation by the staff to come that close to uh, where we need to be, particularly with BEP funds and those type of things. Good job. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Anderson? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Other business. Is there anything that you'd like to have to add to the agenda for next month? Ms. Ridley. Uh, board, I asked Mrs. Ridley if she would fold the board for a retreat. You will be receiving an email from her with some dates for you to consider when to have our retreat. I've asked her to check with Dr. Gilbert's schedule also. Is there anything else? Are we going to set a record tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Adjourned. You too.